Hello everyone, this is Joe the Orange, and today I am playing Millie Vanilli and Silver Shield Swordsman. The game plan for today is to run in a straight line to the enemy base. It's not the most well thought out plan, but fuck it. And for this game, I am wearing no armor on my Silver Shield Swordsman, and I also have the 12% run speed boost from his boots, so he should be traveling at a pretty fucking quick speed. So why would I play this combo? Well, I was just sick of being such a slow cunt with um, melee infantry, so I decided, you know, let's give Millie another shot. And Silver Shield Swordsman for tier 8 to tier 10 units is probably one of the quickest if you don't wear the armor, you just have the boots on. And then you have that Olympus ability, which I fucking forgot to take this game. And then you just chuck your fucking shields on the ground. That's what I do at the start of all these games. Just fuck those shields off. And then your speed boost should be 35% if you remember to bring the Olympus uh, consumable, which I fucking forgot. So it's like, uh, I think it's 29%. So it's, it's quick enough. And I'm just going to try to surprise the opponent. And I had a really shit position on the map. This is a really bad idea. Because usually there'll be heavy infantry. And as a melee and on, on open grounds, you don't really want to fight any heavy infantry. In fact, this whole first game was just full of fucking bad ideas. But, you know, just go roll with the punches. So I see those catapults shooting and they have the flag so they can see me. But I don't give a fuck. I'm running straight to their base. I'm just coming in like the Flash, like Flash Gordon. So don't do any of this shit. What you're seeing now is not good gameplay. It can get you some points if you get lucky, but you know. And, see, I should check for pikes there, which I don't. And there is, um, oh sorry, stakes there, but I don't, and I just run in. So I don't give a shit. And the idea was just to surround them and fuck them up. He has heavy infantry guarding them, but just go in, engage, get that fear off, get my other units to surround them, and just fuck them up, basically. That's the whole game plan. And if he tries to retreat, I have another unit at the back who can cut off their escape route. But there is stakes there too, and I don't check that either, I just run fucking straight in. <laughs> but this is basically how I play Millie. I just fucking, <laughs> I just run. Run, run, run. Don't fucking do any basic strategies at all, just get your shield in one hand, and throw it on the ground. And then the first thing you see, surround it, and fucking push fear, put fear on it, and hope for the best. You know, you probably fucking die, but... Now that worked out. They shouldn't have, but fucking did. So they're all dead now, so the next part of the plan is to run and find more targets and surround it and kill it. There's <laughs> no fucking plan. It's just, I've got a shit ton of speed, I can run quick. That's my goal. If I run into something I don't like, I'll run away. Fucking genius. But that's one thing I find about Millie, if you just keep him moving, just keep him fucking on the roll, just, you know, with his speed, just keep him rolling and rolling, moving around a lot. You do so much better than, like, setting up ambushes and trying to flank people, well, just trying to do any strategy at all. Just keep moving and then surround, kill, surround, kill, and just keep moving. That seems to work out a lot better. It shouldn't, but it does. I think the reason being is, if you're stationary, you're opening yourself up to getting fucked up by catapults and it's easier for range to shoot you down and that's one thing about Millie's raised shields it's probably the worst fucking uh, missile block ability in the game so I don't care for it at all I've never seen it actually it blocks a few missiles but not enough to actually give a fuck about maybe when I get high tier raised shields it might be useful but I think I've got like four or five, and it's just useless. And the trade-off is, if I chuck my shields on the ground, I can actually ch chase down ranged units and kill them. If I keep my shields, they slowly kite me and kill me. So, well, I don't get the fucking point. Because look at who Millie will lose to in melee combat. Germanicus has vengeance, so he'll probably just eat your units alive. Scipio can't be feared, so he'll probably just outlast you and kill you. Then you have Leonidas, who's just a complete counter. So he's not a melee commander, you know? He's more of a hunter. You need that speed to catch units. So, oh, here we go, back into the game. 
I'm killing those snakes this time because they're very easy to spot. And then I triple feared this guy. I just want him out of the fucking way so I can get to that siege equipment. And the funny thing is, my unit that he was trying to attack bugged out and just ran off over there. And that killed him. <laughs> because he tried to follow it and then he ended up getting routed because he was following that unit and it basically killed him. Now you will notice I am starting to take ranged damage. Just keep going. That's one thing on melee. If you try to retreat the minute that you start taking ranged damage, it's a bad idea. Just follow where the ranged damage is coming from. And if it's a trap or they have units there, Millie has so much speed, most of the time he can actually outmaneuver them and still get to the range and kill it. So as you notice, the range fire stopped. The minute I advanced and just try to get to them, they retreated. And yep, now I'm out of danger and they're dead now, so that's it happens all the time. You might once in a while just get totally fucked up as you get ambushed, but once you've dropped those shields. You have to be as aggressive as shit. Because if the minute you start retreating and you're taking ranged damage, you're probably dead. So what I should have done there is circle around the other way. But I didn't want to take on the heavy cav out in the open, the tier 10 heavy cav, because I have no shields. If he charges me in the forest, he's dead. But if he charges in the open, I've got no shields, he's going to do a shit ton of damage and he's probably just going to retreat out. So that brings us to the end of game one as Millie. And now we're moving on to the second game, and I did have a plan for this game, but... I was trying to convince the Light Spears Leo player to go at the front. Because then he engages, he's Leo, he's going to stick around for ages, and I could circle around, get those fears off, you know, we'll win. But he decided, no, no, I'll stay behind you. And since that was the case, I decided to head up the hill because as medium infantry I have a better chance heading up the hill into open ground on this side of the map than fighting light infantry in the forest. And of course since he's light infantry he's just going to push through the forest area and then hopefully if any of us get in trouble we can back each other up. And this guy that I thought would be going to the flag has decided to come up with us. So there's even going to be more light infantry in the forest, there's no reason for me to be in there. And the other thing is, if I circle around the side of this hill, like around to their rear, I guess, then hopefully I can run into their range units and clean them up before they demolish our light infantry. And the chances of me running into heavy infantry up here is pretty slim. So I see this light infantry versus light infantry battle about to take place and I see this guy and think he's going to back him up I'll only send one unit to help out. But he just keeps going. He, he just fucking doesn't give a shit about his allies. He's, he just walks right past. It's easy points, he just walks straight past it. So I go to line up the charge here and the interesting thing is this guy is using Millie, that's why he's moving so fast. So I'm not sure how Leo actually lost this fight. Especially with uh, Battle Cry and Hold the Line, but he managed to, and you can see the speed on Millie. It's pretty amazing, but uh, yeah, I've got tier 9 sword, so I can pile on him for a fair bit of damage. And of course, Geralt has ran into a bit of trouble here, but it's lined up a perfect situation for Millie where I can surround them pretty easy because they're already, already in combat and just get those fears off. And this is where you make the big points on melee, is when you get them to retreat and run through your units. And that's why it's so important to surround them and kill them before they actually rally again. And now I see the Leo light spears come back into play and I'm thinking, oh he's killed those fucking guys and then yeah I get recharged and I was like, where the fuck did they come from? Luckily, once you have dropped your shields on light spears as melee, you do no damage during a charge, like shit all. So I'm in a pretty decent situation here, they are way outnumbered and he's bound to die. What he would have been better off doing is simply heading to base, they, they had no chance in this situation. There's way too many of us. Instead of just charging in there, he's better off to head to our base and try to accomplish something there. And that's the other funny thing about Millie is the Greek consumable shared wine is a counter to Millie. 
you know, there's so many counters to him. He doesn't really have that much going for him, apart from speed. And that's another reason I think Ray's shields is just a fucking waste. What would be interesting is if they gave Millie push and removed Ray's shields. But because push was fucking awesome. It was just good fun. And it's gone from the game now. No one has it. So back to the game, I start heading towards that base, and then I see this ambush this guy is trying to set up, and then I think, oh, this is easy pickings. Because I have that much speed, I could easily take out this unit before his units can back it up. And what I should have done right now is charge, but he does get that charge off on me. But it's put his unit right in the middle of all three of my units. So he's, it's dead. There's no time to help that unit at all, it's just fucking fried. And one thing about when you solo queue is, if you don't make the moves, no one's fucking going to. So you should let the Leo player go up with his raised shields, because it does way more, arch, well it does more, way more missile block than your raised shields, but the chances of him actually going in once he gets under a little bit of fire is fuck all. Everyone takes that little bit of fire and retreats. It's just how people play. So I just run the fuck in there. <laughs> if I go in there, everyone follows. And then that's how you beat ranged units. You go in as a big force. But someone has to initiate that. Or else you all just sit there taking slight little bits of damage here and there and no one actually fucking does anything. And we had such a big lead at this stage. There's no reason we shouldn't just go for wiping them all. You know, the battle will be shorter, we can get into our next game. This one's pretty much fucking over, but they could drag it out for another seven minutes. So I've managed to push forward and yeah, I have no real guys left, but I managed to kill this range unit because once you get into combat with them, they're pretty much fucking dead. And that's the thing about range units. Once you actually get in, you might take a shit ton of damage, but once you actually get into combat with them, they're basically easy pickings, and you can wipe them out in seconds with Milly. You know, he has that speed for it, especially with Silver Shield Swordsman. Of course, if you're in a team, you could easily have a strategy like, let's put Leo or Germanicus up front to push into melee combat, you know, to take up that position and get rained on because he can block so much of it and then have Millie run around killing all the range and you know getting those flank charges on putting that fear on for Germanicus and another important thing to do when you're facing a massive range force is to take formation attack off just remove that shit because when your units engage and they're in formation attack and they start firing into your into the combat area they are killing more of you than their allies, but if you take formation attack off, they group up with the other enemy unit, and then when they start friendly firing it, they're actually killing just as much of their ally, and they end up with a shit ton of negative points from friendly fire. So here we go into the third game, and I'm on the same map, but this time I get the position I want, and this is the best position I find for melee when you have medium infantry. Because with your speed, you can get there quicker or around the same time as the light infantry. And where the flag is, is, is open ground. So light infantry doesn't actually have the advantage there. Also being swords, you can pile on them. Once you reveal where they are, you can get some easy pylons in. Without them being able to retaliate. And if they push for the flag with heavy infantry, you can simply take them on in the bush area. You have a big advantage over the heavy infantry in the bushes. So the enemy is approaching with medium infantry. And since I'm melee, I don't want to fight fair. So I just get those palms in and then back away and let our light infantry deal with that shit. And once the light infantry has engaged, I can go around the flanks and get that fear in. Of course, you might have noticed I'm still holding the flag. I'm just trying to give any vision I can to our team, even though we don't really have a combo that can take advantage of that. And as you can see, the light infantry has engaged now, so I'm getting my swords to go around the sides to get that charge in. And since his speed is lower than ours, there's no real place he can go. So from the start of the game, we've already taken out three of the enemy units. So it gives us a big advantage. And at some stage, they 
change the tower so it actually reveals the middle of the map, not just the forest beneath the tower. Which it didn't do before, I'm not sure when they did that, So, but now it's even more important to take that flag. As you may have noticed, a lot of their force is light infantry and they are pushing up to our base. So the original plan was just to push into their base and hope to outrush them. And the battle up top should be easily won because they outnumber those three units up there and they have light infantry and cavs, so I'm not too worried about that. And since I didn't get fired on by artillery when I was holding the flag, I'm presuming they don't have any artillery. Unfortunately, when I was approaching the base, their cav did spot me, so now they know where I'm approaching from, so I just back off and start going back to base. And it was a good thing I did because I can't take on horse archers as a melee. There's no chance of me catching them, and I don't have raised shields. And since we're at head on points, if I just go back to base and defend, eventually they will have to come up and try to take our base. So I send my one unit back to hold the tower again, just to give vision for my two other units. And one thing you have to think about when you are saving points for Silver Shield Swordsmen is that they are shit until they get boots, but the armor they get is also shit. So you're spending I don't even know what it is, 20 something K for the armor, 12 K for the boots, for armor that you're not even going to fucking use. But you have to, to make them viable. Or else, they're just fucking crap, if you ask me. At least on melee. I'm guessing on generally every commander, because they have low melee defense. And that's a bad thing for Leo. Now some archers have came out of that forest area and I just think, oh well they're going to die to that cab, so I keep heading towards base. But then I notice that they are sending their own cab in, and that's basically going to kill our cab, so I better back him up. Unfortunately I'm a bit late to the party, but what I can do with that unit is catch those archers because my Silver Shield Swordsmen are so quick. And since their cab is in the forest area and it's heavy, I can kill a bunch of them before they'll be able to retreat. In the open ground, they can retreat much quicker and you get charged and you can't even kill two of them. And he was pulling his other cav unit around and I'm guessing he was lining up a charge on me and then he would just do the initial charge and then pull out and I won't be able to retaliate as much as he's killed. I might be able to pile on him, but that's about it. Now we have a lot of range in our base so I'm just putting out my swords in the cap zone and that way when they start capping I can retaliate but I can concentrate on this unit and get our points up by taking out the archers because at the moment there's no real point of me trying to cap the, the, look, I've got one unit there and there's no real allies so if I try to cap you know there's going to have one archer unit keep shooting me or I'll get wiped out there's no real fucking point but as you can see, Silver Shield Swordsman can cash archers. It's one of the fucking few units that can on foot. And I fuck up here. Because I see these swords and they're trying to cap. And then I think, I'm in my cap zone, so I can't be, you know, I can't rout. So I'll engage them and keep them in combat. And then someone will flank charge them. Or even better, rear charge them. But one thing I fail to realize there's no melee units there. So the only thing I can get as backup is focus fire. Which is on too much of a cooldown. And look at that fucking charge. <laughs> oh, fuck you, game. Fuck <laughs> it. I do that so many times. Because I click somewhere and expect the unit to charge in that direction. Because I'm used to other games where they do what you say <laughs> you know? but in this fucking corners like just fuck up your units and making them do stupid shit and they charge walls and it is something you can predict after a bunch of games but if you're playing other games and then you come back to this game it kind of fucks you up because you think okay they should do what I say 
you know like in in League of Legends if you click something or do something it does it in this it's like no fuck you man like, you know, I'm doing what I want luckily Millie has a lot of speed so I'm predicting that I can get there and back my own units up before they're dead hopefully and just on a side note I'm trying to figure out what units I should get next I could get higher tier javelins such as um, the tier 10 ones I could save for them or I could get the tier 9 horse archers they're the ones I'm trying to figure out which ones I should purchase or I could get the tier 9 spears the uh, sacred bands and I haven't really played oh yeah and back to the game so I get this charge off and that pretty much wrecks them and that's the end of the game for me as I just sit in cap and wait for us to win but back to what I was talking about, I haven't really played too much Barbarians, I've got them to tier 4 so far. And I'm thinking maybe I should level them up or maybe I should just focus on the Greeks at the moment. Because they have a wider variety to me. You know, they've got the horse archers, they've got the pikes, they've got a bit of everything. So what do you guys think? What units should well what units do you want to see me play next? That I haven't really been playing too much of. But for now that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and please subscribe and thumbs up. And until next time, enjoy your gaming. <laughs>